bringing the people behind our food to life. Obesity, as it's um, understood today, is, is measured by uh, something called body mass index. And it has to do with your height and weight, and it's a complex arithmetical calculation. A number, it's an objective measurement now. Um, it's not somebody's opinion. Um, the rates of obesity have certainly changed from 1980 um, to now. They've doubled or tripled. It's now believed that more than 20 percent of adults in the United States are obese and the number of children who are obese is, has doubled and, as well. Lifestyle and diet are still important and the number of calories you take in and the number of calories you use up is still important. But there are people who will eat the same things and gain weight and other people don't gain weight. There's a diff there are personal differences. Um, our sedentary behavior certainly contributes to the equation on the side of not using up enough of the calories that we eat. But there is new evidence um, that environmental factors present during fetal development determine um, several um, parameters of what make people fat later on. One is the number of fat cells that are formed, which are formed early in embryonic development. Two is the metabolic rate, how much um, of the calories that you eat are burned up for energy and how many are saved for fat. And two is a complex hormonal system which determines when you feel full. And um, if you do something to interfere with that, then you can increase in obesity, obesity as well. This, the, an interesting fact is there's been increases in obesity in many species of animals that live around human beings, it, it, dogs, cats, rats, mice. Um, and it's very unlikely that they're more sedentary and eating different food than they ever ate before. They're also becoming relatively obese and the, the statistical probability that that would happen by chance is very low. So it looks like something in the environment is affecting all of the mammalian species that we know. And it would be, um, the term obesogen is just, a, we've defined it to mean a substance that has this long-term effect without changing the genes. These chemicals could um, produce behavioral effects, as I said, by changing the complex hormone system that determines satiety. Um, there, there was a, a classic study in the Netherlands during World War II that started our thinking about this, in which um, between 1942 and 1944, during the German occupation, the average caloric intake went from 1,800 calories a day to 600 calories a day, which was essentially starvation. And child, if, in a study comparing children born in 1942 and 1944, um, they found significantly higher levels of obesity and cardiovascular disease in the children born during starvation in 1944. And uh, the explanation of that is that somehow their metabolic patterns and their hunger patterns were set to save every single calorie um, and save it as fat because you might need it later is the kind of way you might think about it. And um, this is a very nicely controlled experiment because it's the same Dutch um, um, population, the same genetic background, the same environment. The only thing besides, I suppose, there was emotional stress as well uh, that changed, but it was a, a, an extreme change in diet. So I think that's what got people started thinking about this, um, that changes that occurred in utero could affect one's eating behavior for the rest of one's life and one's metabolic pattern of storing it in certain kinds of fat cells. There are natural processes that, if, that control um, the pattern of fat cell deposition and chemicals can interfere with it too. It's known that the chemicals 
inter interact with a certain hormone. It's very complicated, I won't go into it, but they actually know which hormone it, it, they interact with. And when they do this in tissue culture, as well as in animal studies, they've done it in tissue culture. If you feed these tissue culture cells the obesogen, like tributyl tin, um, these cells turn into fat cells. And if you don't feed it to them, many of them turn into bone cells. But if you feed it to them, they turn into many, many more fat cells. And there are nice pictures of, of these um, that are available. Um, so once a fat cell, always a fat cell. There are several classes of um, environmental chemicals that are not normal in the human body that are believed to be endocrine, endocrine disrupting. There's good evidence for bisphenol A or BPA, which is found in the linings of tin cans and in some polycarbonate plastics. There's good evidence for the phthalates, which are uh, small molecules used in plasticizing and in coloring and in fragrancing things. Those molecules escape into our food supply, and there's good evidence that they're endocrine disrupting chemicals. There's all of the um, organophosphate pesticides like DDT, which has been banned for 30 plus years, but is still present in the environment. There's dioxins. Um, there's um, the polybrominated diethyl ethers, which are used for flame retardants. Um, all of these substances, there is substantial evidence linking them to um, endocrine disrupting properties. Um, this is all epidemiological evidence because we can't ethically do these studies in human beings, but there's also animal evidence as well. Because of the trends we've seen in our population for very big increases in obesity, we, we've left out reproductive effects, but there's earlier and earlier puberty and more feminization of males, um, cardiovascular diseases, strokes, hypertension, um, neurodevelopmental disorders in children have been increasing. And that's why people ask the question. We, we're asking the question, why is this happening? Our heredity hasn't changed. It's very, very likely that it's something in our environment that's causing these changes. And they're happening all over the world because these toxicants such as DDT are all over the world. Uh, as the permafrost melts in the Arctic, ice that melts that was formed in 1930s has, still has DDT in it. The levels of DDT are going up around the Arctic because it's coming out. So toxicants don't always go away. They're all often persistent and bioaccumulative that they're, they're stored in the body. Um, this is, these are real health problems that we know about. We are not just trying to um, find bad chemicals. We know that they're there. We need to find out which they are, and we need to limit their uses for the sake of the health of the whole um, universe, actually. Uh, frogs are going down the tubes. Bees are going down the tubes. One species at a time, we're seeing real problems from the environment. So we need to know why. We need to have the funds for these studies and we need to pay attention to them.